Let's also talk about a problem or two that we might encounter when it comes to actually using the hardware uh, that we have for performance. We are under attack. There's been a lot of stuff that's happened lately in terms of exploiting the hardware of various CPU architectures to get access to privileged data. And accordingly, there will be mitigations that are deployed, but unfortunately those mitigations themselves have a negative performance impact. You know, the, uh, the cost of mitigating the, uh, mitigating the problem is, well, performance is worse. So, these things do have performance implications. So there's two cache side channel attacks that we want to talk about, and they are called Meltdown and Spectre. Uh, no, no, wait, not not those. These Meltdown and Spectre. Okay. What are these about? Well, they cause privileged memory to be loaded into cache, uh, and then basically you are trying, as the attacker, uh, to figure out uh, what is in the cache. Uh, and uh, this, you know, that's why it's a side channel attack, is you know, it's not the normal uh, program execution that causes it, um, but we are relying on information leakage to get the information that we need. Uh, and these attacks leverage these performance features of modern CPUs to uh, ultimately break process isolation guarantees. Uh, the expectation that we normally have is that unrelated processes can't see the memory of one another. Uh, if they're sharing memory, sure, fine, whatever. Um, but that's not the case. Uh, in principle, a given process can't read memory that belongs to the kernel and can't read memory that belongs to another process. But... Um, Spectre and Meltdown get around that, and the solution is, well, more isolation and lower performance. So here, uh, again in C, is a, um, is a demonstration of how you would figure out some data that you're not supposed to get. So um, we're going to create an array here, array 1, uh, which is small, uh, and then array 2, which is of size uh, hex 400. Um, so anything that is above that uh, is going to be out of bounds. Uh, and basically, um, our, uh, what we're going to do is you know, assign unsigned long untrusted offset from caller is some value. Uh, and if that value is less than array 1 length, um, then uh, unsigned char value is look at array data with this unsigned offset. Uh, and uh, unsigned long index 2 is value, uh, and then a bitwise and with the number 1, uh, times hex 100 plus hex 200. Uh, and if index 2 is less than array 2 length, then unsigned char value 2 is array data index 2. Okay, this doesn't look like very much of anything, but what is interesting about it is that it's timing that gives it away. When we're executing this program as the CPU, we don't know whether the branch that's uh, the if statement is going to be taken or not. Uh, and so speculation will occur. Uh, and what we are going to find out, basically, is, well, later on, we'll find out if un untrusted offset from caller is less than array length. Uh, we'll find that that's actually not the case, and the branch that we are executing uh, won't be uh, won't be kept. We're going to throw away the data that uh, we uh, have computed and the steps that we did here. Um, because ultimately, uh, if we did go into this branch, um, we would end up reading way past the end of the array, and we would encounter a segmentation fault, and it wouldn't work, uh, and that sort of thing. So what we're going to do is, using speculative execution, we don't know what value is going to be, but we're reading memory that doesn't belong to us, and yet we're doing a comparison with it. So the hardware doesn't know or care that this memory belongs to somebody else, uh, and will in fact do the comparison and produce a value for index 2 uh, that will either uh, show a 1 or a 0 for value uh, in its final value. Uh, and then uh, when we do the next part, if index 2 is less than uh, the array index length, uh, we will try to uh, use that value um, index 2, and the timing will tell us whether or not we ended up with a 1 or a 0. 
the the data that we are not supposed to see um, was uh, effectively leaked to us one bit at a time because based on whether or not there is a cache miss then we know what happened right if if there was a cache miss that tells us that our answer is either zero or one and if there is no cache miss it tells us it's the opposite answer depends of course how you structure your attack um but in this case you know this is interesting isn't it now of course you have to do this a lot to steal the data that you are supposed to be getting you know one bit at a time but it does actually work uh, and the problem is that you know, the hash page that we were looking at got loaded, and if we find out that that was a mistake because we should not have taken this branch, that cache page doesn't get flushed. Uh, and therefore, we know that it takes time to get it uh, if it wasn't loaded, and it's there immediately if it was. So we are basing a decision uh, on you know, whether or not the data is, uh, is present, uh, as the CPU, so whether we have to fetch it or not, uh, and if we have to fetch it, it takes longer, and somebody who is the attacker in this scenario knows whether this bit of memory that they're not supposed to see is zero or one based on how long it takes to execute the statement. That's pretty clever, but also pretty dangerous. Um, there's another kind of attack that we will talk about, a hyper-threading attack, uh, and in hyper-threading we have two threads that are sharing the same execution core, meaning that they have some hardware in common, uh, and basically this is as though you have two people who are writing an exam, you know, in the same room at adjacent desks. Um, it means that a thread can observe what the other thread is doing. Um, by noticing its cache accesses and by timing how long it takes for certain operations to take place, uh, you could actually figure out what's going on. Uh, and there is a proof of concept attack for this called Port Smash, uh, which is going to be, um, well, something you could look up if you were so inclined. Um, but the idea is that basically if you're sitting in the same room as somebody and you're taking a multiple choice exam, you could notice what answers they are choosing by paying attention to how long it takes them to move their pencil down the page to fill in the correct circle. You have to be running on the same CPU as the victim, but that actually is totally possible. Because, well, you know, if you are using some fraction of some cloud service uh, provider's uh, CPU, you're running on the same CPU with other people, and you know, what isolation you get, I don't know. It really depends on what your, uh, what your provider offers. Uh, so in the practical example of Port Smash, a 384-bit 380 uh, secret key is stolen over time by another process, although it is somewhat slow. Uh, and one mitigation of this is disable hyper-threading, uh, which is potentially a long-term solution. Um, uh, mitigation prevents threads from unrelated processes from using the same core, so if we have uh, hyper-threading, uh, CPU, then you know, we are effectively limiting how much of that we use. Uh, if there are uh, you know, 12 programs and we have 12 uh, cores, including hyper-threading ones, then we can't actually run them all at the same time. Uh, now, of course, if your one process has multiple threads, then two threads from the same process could run on the same core. Um, if you're running your own servers, or you have the server all to yourself, then this isn't a problem because it's your system, you're, you're using it, you aren't worried about other users running their arbitrary code, stealing your secret key. But in a you know, cloud provider scenario, possibly the only really long-term solution to this is not using hyper-threading at all. Uh, and the uh, implications are perhaps significant, uh, but certainly they are obvious that this is going to make your program potentially a lot slower. So hardware bugs, hardware issues, you know, unforeseen circumstances do matter to the execution of our program. Uh, and if you ask uh, the system administrators in the EC department, uh, they could tell you that we have some machines uh, where the meltdown and specter mitigations do result in lower performance of the CPU.